Welcome to Dropping In, a podcast of storytelling and interviews with your host, Winter Olympian Mercedes Nickel. Thank you so much for dropping in on episode 28. Yes, the winter season is still here and we have heard from some phenomenal guests to find out what is in their pack. Today's will not disappoint. Let me introduce you to episode 28's guest that we will be dropping in with. She was sworn in as a Canadian citizen, June 2009. She is now a two-time Canadian Winter Olympian, a three-time world medalist, a two-time Grand Prix final champion, and a three-time Canadian national champion in ice dance. She starred on Battle of the Blades in 2019 as well as 2020. She's toured several times with Stars on Ice Canada. She's an athlete, ad- activist, and advocate. This friend, Olympian, world medalist in ice dancing is a force. Let's find out what's in Caitlin Weaver's pack. Caitlin Weaver, are you ready to drop in? Yes, I don't know what that means, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so dropping it could be just coming on the show or in snowboard terms it's like dropping into the half pipe or something like that yeah you got it <laughs> um so on dropping in I start with 10 rapid fire questions are you ready okay okay <laughs> oh um yes yeah, sorry you froze for one second but now you're back I I'm can back. see you okay we're good Perfect. number one where in the world are you today New York City. Perfect. Number two, you competed at two Winter Olympic Games, Sochi Mm -hmm. and Pyeongchang. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite? Sochi. Sochi. Why? Uh, Mm -hmm. These are never rapid fire, by the way. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think there's something so magical about your first time. Uh, and I think because of the setup, the Canadian team was more centralized. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we ended up spending more time together. So there's more opportunity for bonding and friendships like ours. Um, and Pyeongchang was, was more spread out. So just even the logistics made it harder to yes. become as unified of a team as the Sochi one was. I just got goosebumps remembering it all that. I love that. Oh, <laughs> um, number three having to do with the four seasons, which is your favorite? Spring, I guess. That's hard to pick. I think spring. Because spring's pretty sweet though. I actually like that for snowboarding too, because it's like softer snow and the sun's coming out, longer days. The sun, yeah, where it's still, it's the the wind still has a nip in it, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's, but it's sunny and there's the something so optimistic and hopeful about spring. So true. Oh, you're so positive. I need the positivity right now, to be honest. (laughs) Okay. Number four, being a world-class athlete, you have traveled all over the world. Do you have one single solitary favorite place? Oh, no. (laughs) Do you have a couple? Yes. Okay. Well, what would they be? Um, Fukuoka, Japan. Uh, what was Barcelona. that? Fukuoka. 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 Japan. Japan. Um, uh, Victoria, BC. Barcelona. Oh. Um, Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, to name a few, it's it's really hard to pick. I I fall in love wherever I go. To be honest, it's a problem. Sure. I know I miss travel. <laughs> you named two of my favorite in there. I adore Barcelona and I adore Japan. I think it's the people in Japan too. They're so kind. hundred percent. So unlike sweet. any other. Yeah. Okay. Um, number five, ice dancing being your jam. Do you mm. have a, a favorite dance? Tango. Tango. I was kind of hoping you would say tango. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I just like mysterious and sexual and sensual? No, um, tango, I always, since I was a little girl, eight years old, before I even knew what a tango was, I always like loved um, moving to Latin rhythms. I don't know. Um, But growing up, 
I love the tango rhythms and I love the history and um, it's just so mysterious. You know, it's such a story within a dance and um, I always gravitate towards those. I think it's hard to choose though. Wicked. Nice. Number. I mean, I've seen you skate and I just blown away. It's awesome. (laughs) Number, number six, battle of the blades is a show that you were on in Canada. Do you have Mm -hmm. a favorite? This was your second season in it, right? Yes. Do you have a favorite moment from this season? Um, well, my favorite moment was um, performing our Halloween number because I've never, um, I love storytelling, but I've never been able to like do makeup that really is theatrical. And I sense you still have to like look pretty or, you know what I mean? You can't go too far. And um, we told the story about a witch and her victim and, but like comedy can't be. And I had a nose prosthetic and my face was painted, but Brian Bickle, my partner hated it because he said I looked really scary and kind of gross. So um, that was my favorite moment because it was just like letting it all hang out, you know, and kind of like doing all the things that we don't get to do in competition. Um, But honestly, every moment that we were able to perform together was so much fun. And we just laughed our way through every program. So um, it was a great, that show always is a really positive experience. I know. For and that, that airs in, um, in the fall, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So funny story. I think I've told you this before, but I went and saw you, well, you invited me to come see you at, at skating um, stars on ice. And that was the year that yes. you guys did a taller Cranston tribute. Do you remember Uh that? And I was in like full tears. So the reasoning behind that is, um, again, it'll go back to Battle of the Blades and me not being able to watch it because I was in San Miguel de Allende where Taller Cranston resided. And he was one of our best family friends. Uh, Unfortunately, he's passed away since, but that he's the whole Mm. reason that my parents are down there in the shoulder seasons now. He was like, my parents are like, oh, we really like want to find somewhere that's nice and um, and in the sun. And he's like, if you're going to buy anywhere in Mexico, you have, you must come visit me. And, <laughs> and you know how he would say that. And so they went and within two weeks, they like had bought a house and were, they're like, this is our jam. That's All thanks incredible. to Taller. So he is such a legend and, and really defined, like redefined skating, you totally. know, so Canada's totally. lucky to have him. But um, that is so funny. Such I know. World, so you know? I was, yeah, I was in Mexico and I wasn't able to watch, but we were in the the heart there with Taller, which was pretty yeah. funny. Oh. Nice. And number seven. Okay. This is kind of weird, but we've touched on it. So when I first met you, um, I'm pretty sure you were in your full makeup for skating. Um, like 99% likely. <laughs> I was like, I was a snowboarder from the mountain town and I was like, oh, really nice to meet you. And it's just like a lot of makeup, a lot. (laughs) Um, But I think like, like all the girls had it and I was just like, okay, okay. This is just like, this is just what they do. And I get it. Like, I totally get it. I I respect it. Do you have any tips for the listeners for makeup? Oh, um, gosh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, a ma- like a makeup guru these days. Like there are these women that go on YouTube and e- even from my sport that are just like create works of art. And, um, I am a little bit too impatient, <laughs> I think, but, but an ice dancer's best friend is a pair of eyelashes, fake eyelashes. Oh. It changes everything. And it's, it's funny you mentioned that because oftentimes with the other Olympic athletes on our team, they would say like, oh, you know, you can spot a figure skater because they walk into breakfast with like a full beat, you know, like lashes out to here, like red lipstick. And you're just like, that is not one of us. That's a figure skater. Um, But I'll tell you what, like, I love throwing on a lash and it just like, it, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, it just accentuates eyelashes and that's like such a part of like the I stamp aesthetic. If you okay, will. cool, cool, cool. I put um, a mascara on and it changes my whole life. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Perfect. Good tip. Good tip. Okay. Number eight, back to seriousness. Okay. Okay. Was it a dream or a mission to make it to the Olympics? Um, 
I want to say it was fate. <laughs> no, but that's not that's not true. Um, Stars no, I, well, it's hard. Yeah, no, it's hard to it's hard to choose between that because what starts at a dream became a mission, you know. Yeah. Um, but my my parents told me that even as a young girl, I I told people I was going, you know, as a six year old, and everyone says, okay, yeah, like dream big, you know. But it's always something that I I wanted to do and. And I remember the time where it became a reality though, where it was like, oh no, you're going to, you want to go like soon. This is not off in the distance anymore. Like this is a reality. So you better start acting like it. Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's, that was a turning point, you know, where you realize it's, it can come true, you For know? Sure. So cool. So I love yeah. that. <laughs> the Olympics just giving me goosebumps all the time now thanks <laughs> I always heard that was the thing like one of my mentors Tara Teigen was like if if you like once you're retired and done you're like if you see anything Olympics or hear anything Olympics you will like yeah. either cry or get the goosebumps and I was like okay I'm at that point now <laughs> yeah I hear you I hear you so cool um so magical so magical okay number nine um do you still skate with Andrew? Yes. Um, when it's not a global pandemic. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Andrew and I still um, do shows. And last year, up right up until March, actually, when the world shut down, we were, we were very active doing shows. And um, we were ready to go on tour to Japan and across North America. And then everything got canceled. So, um, you know, it's hard to know what's, coming in the future I mean mm -hmm. people aren't ready like shouldn't be ready and I don't think aren't going to emotionally be ready to sit in a, an arena side by side yeah. for a while you know so I'm very grateful for the opportunities we had but um you know if we're given the chance we absolutely will be performing again together. yay I'm pretty sure that just made a lot of people's smile come back <laughs> which is great. and I miss him I miss him with the borders being closed for a yeah. while and you know with travel restrictions and you know, as, as they should, it's, you know, I miss my partner. I miss my buddy. Sure. It's a so. tough time right now. Mm. Mm. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you too. <laughs> okay. Number 10, the last one of the never rapid fire questions with me. <laughs> Do you, this is kind of like a two part question. Do you okay. have any say in your dresses and outfits that you wear? You do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then do you have a particular favorite one? That's like choosing your favorite child. Um, <laughs> and I've got many. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. Yes, I do because I choose, I like to, you know, I like, I like to participate in the process and um, it really is personal depending on the skater. Some people say like, let the designer take all of that. I just want to skate. And whereas I, it feels like an artistic yeah. um like form of your expression and it's all part of the fantasy you know you have your music and your costume and your look and your character and that's yeah. something I've always really loved um to create and it, with you know a great designer that knows all the things about um costuming um and, and then so my like, favorite... so like you don't have a so you don't have like a Serena Williams where her hair all the beads came out Right. Um, oh, I had beads. I had beads. Yeah, there have been some cocktail malfunctions. Um, nothing serious, but I've had beads come up. Oh my gosh, funny little funny story for your never rapid fire question. Yeah, <laughs> I had. Um, we were doing like a Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers style foxtrot piece. Yeah. Um, and I had this costume that was inspired by Ginger Rogers, and it, it was all feathers um, on the top, okay. and um, like ostrich feathers, and it it was like off the shoulder like this. And we went to Japan actually to compete at our first competition of the season. And I wore it on practice. And meanwhile, like everybody's really afraid of the feathers coming off. If it comes off, you get a deduction. Oh. So I'm on practice. I I'm, have my eye looking over my shoulder every second, making sure that no feathers are coming off. Yeah. We finish our run through, we open our arms and just like a chicken exploded on the ice, my feathers exploded in a plume like this it ended up with us like I had a circle of, of blue blue feathers all around me and Andrew and I were like shoot 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 trying to pick them all up and thankfully this wasn't in competition I was just in practice so there were no points deducted um but it was so embarrassing for your costume to explode 
yeah on the ice and so I ended up having to wear my backup so Dawn's feathers (laughs) Dawn's feathers yeah oh my gosh amazing only nice dance only nice dance (laughs) oh well thank you for doing the rapid fire and now we're gonna get into because I don't I mean I grew up figure skating but I cannot remember what I would put in my bag or my pack so will you share with us what you have in your pack yeah I actually had to make um I had to make I had to make a list. So an ice dancer always likes to be prepared. Um, yes. And um, this is almost to like an embarrassing extent. So I made a list of all the things that are that are normally in my skating bag. Okay. This is like norm. This is not in excess. Okay. And I'm totally honest. All right. <clears throat> How big is this bag? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a carry on size wheel. Okay. Bag. Okay. 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 Yeah. And like, skater you know you see your skate the skaters like yeah like the rolly carry on bag, right yeah yeah the rolly carry on yeah okay, okay. costumes slash backup costumes. oh so hold on in the case of the My feather. Go- wait 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 sorry sorry i have a google nest and it just started talking to me <laughs> okay google stop okay can you start that again <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> this is the pandemic when we have like relationships with our devices uh, oh it's all i have <laughs> if you've if you I, I got i got my google nest and my dad was like um can you ask it to find you a boyfriend and so you i say hey google can you find me a boyfriend and then he says can you hear it you can search for dating sites but don't forget you're perfect on your own too <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Google. Google's my bestie right now. <laughs> Sorry. Very reliable. Just Speaks kind words. Too. Nothing but kind yeah. words. Um, <laughs> back to what's yes, in your I bag. Will start over. Yes. I'm so sorry. No, it's all good. Okay. So a nice dancer always likes to be prepared. And these are things that just off the top of my head are always in there. Not thing, not I this is not over prepared. This is yeah. my normal. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> costumes slash backup costumes sometimes. Noted. Skates, guards, towel, two to three backup pairs of tights. Right. Just in case. Um, extra laces, sewing kit, a hundred bobby pins, roughly. Take, you know, minus, plus or minus a couple. <laughs> Band aids, copy of backup music on CD. Bunga pads, which are like ankle sleeve protectors, comb, brush, hair ties, clear hair ties, double-sided tape, bobby pins, again, just maybe in another spot in case I need them, but I can't find them, hairspray, makeup, snacks that would consist of either fruit, oatmeal packets, energy bar, etc. hydrator slash electrolyte powder slash coconut water slash water bottle, any combination of any of those hydrating things. Mm-hmm. chargers headphones perfume an extra layer in case it's cold socks a stone or a screwdriver so a stone to make sure that our blades are sharpened in case they get nicked good luck charms note from mom book tampons three to four used slash current significant room keys <laughs> three to four you know the <laughs> strone gum vitamin b toothbrush and toothpaste okay I like your snack list. Um, what is your good luck charm? Um, that I have a little four. Are you, if you're okay with sharing? Keychain. Yeah, no, it honestly like depends on the year. Um, or I've got like little notes from my mom, you know, she sent me something before I left. Um, or like significant, um, little mementos, you know, like, yeah. I've got little like stones for my coaches that have like words on them, like trust or, yes. you know, like, like yes. little, like tactile things. Totally love um, those. I but yeah, those so that's in case there's any emergency for any reason, I will have the solution. <laughs> Wait, did you say guards? Skating guards? Yes, skate guards. And, yeah. the, fl- and the fluffy ones too? Is that still a thing? The, the fluffy ones are on the skates. So I didn't, okay. I didn't write that. I could add that. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just to be clear. Why, why <laughs> over like 200 bobby pins? <laughs> Where are we, what are we doing with those? What's, what's happening? <laughs> Like you're just oh like, <laughs> um, well, I want to make up some, I want to make up some joke about like how you could get out of a burn, burning building with bobby pins, but, um, I feel like you could, you could make a rope <laughs> out of them somehow. You have so many. <laughs> I feel like we're onto something. Things you could do with bobby pins. <laughs> with bobby you, can pins. Make a, you can make a stint. <laughs> um, well, honestly, so usually our hair not not usually but on occasion our hair is up and there's curls there's there's lift there's bun there's twists there's braids like any you know combination of any of these things yeah and at some point you're going you're, something's going to fall out and need to put a bobby pin back in but okay. then you've got your brain thinking my hair's gonna fall out I'll just throw in a couple extra and then after you after you warm up you're like maybe I should throw in like a couple extra just in case because the worst is when your hair falls out. And as I'm speaking, I'm like, wow, having a couple years off of the competitive scene has actually been really healthy for me because <laughs> I'm remembering my thoughts. And maybe your hair. <laughs> oh my gosh. But then, then, you know, any ice dancer, figure skater listening or watching this is going to know the feeling when you can't find one when you need one and that is the worst feeling in the world copy that I okay don't know. no I, don't I get know. it I get it I get it I, currently I have no bobby pins in my hair but I feel like I should have five in there at least right now <laughs> I'll lend you some thank you um so I you talked about all these like quaffs are you doing this all by yourself yeah so you could be a hairstylist. Uh, no, I mean, for myself only, Okay. <laughs> you know, I can't do that anybody else, but like, again, like what we were talking about before, I like the, the whole aesthetic, you yeah. know, and, and telling the story. And so I get bored with just like a slick pony or, you know, nothing wrong with, with the simple look, but I just, for me, it was fun. It was like an artistic outlet to play with different things. Yeah. Um, and so I'd always try and like reinvent myself every competition with a new hair, with a new hairdo, like yes. unnecessary stress. Oh, well, I was just thinking that when I came on here, cause this, I don't know, really know what's going on with this my I love it. today, but, um, I was like, well, people should just tune into my YouTube to see what my hair is going to be the next time. <laughs> I think I want to, I want to try that. I think the, there should be a follow-up uh, with, with us. how to, you need long hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you put it how do you get it I back? just wrapped it around the sides and oh that's cool you, you're so cool no you're so seriously kind. you are too kind no just honest <laughs> okay <laughs> I've learned more about hair and makeup and I appreciate that because I need all of the help I can get in those in no, those situations don't. um oh, but I do my list yeah, no, that list is wicked. I might have to take a photo of that and then share it with everyone if that's okay. Uh, what I do on dropping in is uh, I do some takeaways. So so we would like together to go to back to Japan and Barcelona. Highly recommend to everyone. Um, yeah. Everyone should watch Battle of the Blades because it's just such a great demonstration of athletes abilities so the show is uh, a hockey player is pa paired up with a figure skater and they compete to see who could be the best pair mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant absolutely and they wear and they wear figure skates and yes. the best the best part is that it's all for charity and it's all for charity um, the winning couple gets a hundred thousand dollars towards their charity so um oh, good. how could there's you not really uh, yeah, there's really no bad reason to tune into Battle of the Blades. No, so good. So next fall, we hope that will happen because it happened so. during COVID this year. Yeah, it did. And, you know, even like going back on YouTube or CBC Gem and tuning yes. into some of the old episodes, like it's just, it's just a good time. Well, we all want to see and, your, your Halloween makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the image. I'll send yeah. it to you. <gasps> perfect. Perfect. Oh um, makeup tips eyelashes women or men 
extensions. Yeah. Very nice. Well, it's it's so funny because like nowadays though, like that was the ice dancer me, but nowadays I'm like sunscreen and lip cap, <laughs> you know, like do what makes you feel beautiful and that's all you need. Hundred percent. I agree. Actually, I just went clean with all my makeup. My friend's company, um, Ilya, is all clean makeup. So that's fantastic. What I have on right now, which is oh, really, you'll really have nice. to you'll have to link. You'll have to I link will. us. I will, I'll I will. Check it out. Um, you will hopefully if shows come back, you will be skating with Andrew again because I know we all love to see that. Um I just can't stop with the bobby pins. A lot of bobby pins. <laughs> Who can't? Me. I mean seriously they don't worry hold, I, hold... I act like I don't oh. have any but I do I I have bobby pins <laughs> you know what I think um I think what I'm gonna do after this is figure out just how many things bobby pins can do oh yeah you know please do please do please do and share yeah, that really um, inspired <laughs> I love it so uh, I've been following your Instagram just like any other friend would. And it was so nice to see you out skating the other day. Just that like follow yeah. cam of you skating. I was like, oh, so elegant. So great. So where can people <laughs> find you online if they want to see some of that? Yeah, my Instagram at Katush, K-A, the number two, F-H, um, probably is my most frequented uh, social media. Um, and on Twitter at Caitlin on Ice. And um uh, basically just waiting for the rinks to open back up and in the meantime putting some fundraisers together and trying to um, make a difference in this world that really needs people to show up you know and and so that's where you can kind of check out what I'm up to and um, where I am in the world awesome thank you so much Caitlin for dropping in with me I really appreciate it thanks Mercedes hope to see you soon <laughs> Thanks so much for dropping in. You can find all the dropping in episodes on the Dean Blundell Network or on your preferred podcast network where you can subscribe and not miss an episode. 